Hello again friends, my popper flop house of fun. Don't know about the fun though, this time we're playing the big bad of the format. The biggest bad, some other decks, you know, have, have at times been enemy number one, but Drake has been putting up such good numbers lately, it's hard to argue that this isn't the best all around deck, even though, you know, most other decks are trying to adapt to it as hard as they can. This is a relatively normal list of blue-red drink. There is a separate version which runs moments piece and not all these burn spells. But I am I like this version quite a lot. Let's have a look over some of the choices. So this uh, version is playing the full four flame slash which is quite important in a metagame with quite a lot of affinity which there seems to be at the moment. Uh, dealing four for just one mana is obviously very efficient and teaming up with these lightning bolts and this single in firebolt means that basically any deck with small creatures were pretty good against them anyway because we have so many removal spells and then we play seek out oracles to find more archaeomancers to get them back and then you know play mall drifter and then draw more we have these preordains and like compulsive researches, you know, to keep relevant cards flowing. And we have like four counter spells just because they're great in basically most situations, whether when we're in control mode or killing them mode. You know, this will protect our vital creatures. And, you know, it's just another one to like buy back with our Chaomancer to, you know, lock up games. So, Speaking of killing them, the obvious combo of the deck is to get a Ghostly Flicker to exile an Archaeomancer and a Pyrogon Drake, which generate. So you play the Ghostly Flicker, exile these, return Ghostly Flicker, you net a couple of mana each time, and that's basically infinite mana. And then once you have infinite mana, you can presumably flicker some other creature. You know, you can cast Ghostly Flicker a bunch of times on Archaeomancer and say Seagate Oracle to then dig through your deck to find the Lightning Bolt and kill them. Now quite a lot of decks play like one Rolling Thunder or like some Hellion creatures that are just, you know, coming to play deal some damage or something to like simplify the process. But you don't really need to play him, uh, considering that lightning bolts or fire bolts, if the you know, assuming you remember not to flash it back, will kill the opponent anyway. So the strength of this deck, though, is while it has this unbelievable you know end game where at some point, while you're casting cards that you want to cast anyway, you can just play a normal game without needing to combo off at all. Um, you know, after you know, removing some stuff and counterspelling a, a thing or two, and then not running out of gas because you're playing Seagate Oracles into Archaeomancer into Peregrine Drake into Muldrifter, then you can just beat up your opponent with your value creatures while they just run out of cards. So that's great. One thing I will say about this deck though is that. It's a little bit tricky to do online sometimes if you're in a close game because if you do need to combo off, like you don't have any is it boiler works to get you extra mana or anything, you just have like the bare minimum five lands and Archaeomancer pairing a drake and you don't have like a lightning bolt in your graveyard yet. It can take a while to kill people, uh which cuts down your clock time. So I understand why some people will run a couple of extra ways to just kill the opponent with like lots of mana. Just to cut down on the amount of clicking involved to have to cast our Mancer Ghostly Flicker, you know, a, a couple dozen times and then cast Ghostly Flicker, Archaeomancer, Lightning Bolt, you know, a ton of times as well. Over to the sideboard though, another reason this deck is great is you have a ton of like really sweet cards in it. Uh, if you feel like it. So playing Gorilla Shaman, the 
the big money card in Popper as it's unbelievable against Artifact Lands. Yeah, I mean, it can destroy other things too, but primarily speaking, has the ability to, you know, just wipe out uh, Affinity's land base in short order. Uh, there are Aura Fluxes, which put a massive tax on the Hexproof decks. So we have three of those because the Hexproof is quite popular at the moment. And honestly, like this main deck doesn't have much in the way of interaction with the Hexproof deck. Um, it wouldn't be unreasonable in a particularly Hexproof heavy time to play a couple of Electric Rees instead of you know, flame slash or something, just to give you more interactive cards with that deck. But I'm just foregoing it for now. I haven't played it that often, so I'll probably immediately get 5 would by Hexproof decks, I'm sure. You get to play Pyroblast and Hydroblast. It would be quite easy to play four of either of these, depending on what's more prevalent in your format. I'm playing a, a Dispel as like a fourth version of these for certain matchups. Like against Burden, this may as well be a Hydroblast a lot of the time. And against the blue decks, this may as well be a Pyroblast as well, countering like a counter spell. I mean, it's not as good as either, but it also you know, has a slightly more broad applications if you don't actually play against one of the decks. But then again, you know, three and three of each should be quite good, especially when, you know, stuff like Kiln Fiend is lit are literally blue-red decks and both of them are live. Razorfin Hunter. Now, I've seen a lot of people playing uh, Prodigal Sorcerer or other similar things, but this one costs two mana, and I haven't seen it in lists, so I thought, hey, why not? It helps uh, clean up the board against like enemy goblins, enemy elves, you know, anyone with like one toughness creatures, I'm always happy. And we have a Stormbound Geist just to show up matches where they're trying to kill all of our creatures. Like Stormbound Geist is actually pretty good at killing people who are trying to kill all of our stuff and also is a good blocker against flying creatures. Uh, so it fulfills like multiple rules, if really com totally stellar at any of them. That's I think that's about it. Uh, I'm quite happy in certain matchups to actually board out. You know, most it's like some ghostly flickers, even like a Drake or two, because when people go too hard on trying to disrupt the combo, they leave themselves open to just being valued out by the whole rest of the deck. So. Yeah, let's see how these matches go. I'll see you then.